this fun house. I'm Molly and um, I will be the host of the show today. Um, it's a show about knitting, um, project bag making, now yarn dyeing, which is extremely exciting, and um, kind of my life here in, in Berlin, Germany. Um, I have no idea how long it's been since I've podcast. I think it's definitely been three to four. I'm pretty sure it's been a month since I last podcast. And that's so sad, but so much has gone on. My mom was here for a couple of weeks. Um, I had a birthday, which was fantastic. And I've just been busy, obviously, taking care of a newborn, um, almost a four-year-old in November, and designing and just doing lots of fun stuff and enjoying life, I guess. Um, I'm going to get right into what I've been working on. I have a lot of really wonderful things that I would love to show and share with you guys that are from you guys but that's going to have to wait until the next episode so if any of you have sent me some wonderful extra special things I will be talking about those in the next episode um, mainly because uh, today is going to be a little bit of a shorter podcast and I feel kind of funny saying that because I know that when podcasters say it's going to be a shorter podcast Without fail, the podcast is always super long. <laughs> um, right now, in the A Homespun House group, we are having a windswept cowl or cowl knit along going on. The windswept is my pattern. Um, this is it. It's a really large shawl knit with sport weight yarn. And it is one of my favorite patterns of mine that I, that I have out right now. Um, and this is how it looks. It is a beautiful oversized shawl, like I said. It's one that you can wear nice and cozy in the, the winter, the fall. It's perfect. Um, you can wear it over your shoulders when it's cooler. And the window is open in the house right now. So I think that I will go ahead and wear this over my shoulders because it's nice and cozy and I love it. And you guys, Varie, you've already finished your shawl, which is just crazy. It turned out absolutely beautiful. There are so many, I feel like most people are knitting in different colors. There isn't one main color theme that people have chosen for the windswept. So that's been a lot of fun to see. I know that a couple other podcasters have cast on the windswept, so that's really exciting. Um, I know Isabel from Fluffy Fibers, um, Lara from the Fawn Knits has cast it on, um, Danny from Little Bobbins Podcast has cast it on, so that's been really fun and really exciting and of course special to see. Um, just so fun to see all of your progress. I have been working on another pattern of mine. Uh, when my mom was here, um, she and I decided to do our first dye experiment together with my yarn. And so um, she chose this um, 7525. It's 75% uh, BFL, 25% nylon, which is a base that I'll be having in my shop called Olsen, um, after my grandma's maiden name. So this is in my Olsen base. And um, this is a superwash. It is the only superwash base that I have in my shop at the moment. And this is my foraging mitten pattern. Um, my mom, I did a, had a little bit of help in this, but this is mostly all my mom. And so I have already knit the mitten, and these will be my mom for my mom. So I've knit the mitten. And I still have the thumb to knit, obviously. <laughs> but they are gorgeous. Um, again, this is my pattern, the foraging mitten. Um, you can find that on the webpage at homespunhouse.com, or you can find it on Ravelry, of course. And yeah, it's so fun. It's just a really nice, um, relaxing knit. You, do, you have to pay a little bit of attention just for... Um, the thumb increases really and the other the rest of the pattern is quite smooth sailing so this is my pretty little cake of yarn it's so much fun to knit because I took pictures of kind of the dyeing process of my mom I have a little funny picture of her in her apron 
and um, just her kind of deciding how she wants to put the dye on there and um, it was a lot of fun. This is definitely, I'm sure if you guys have guessed, a Molly colorway. It's something that I adore and love and I'm having a lot of fun knitting with it. I have started the second one. I love these. Um, Danny from The Little Bobbins makes these and they're flawless. I think they are wonderfully made. So I have the cuff finished and I am just now starting to do the increases for the thumb. And as I do with almost all of my um, projects, I have a little progress keeper on there. I have the scarecrow because I have started to put a lot of fun fall time um, progress keepers in the shop. I have a scarecrow, I have a turkey for Thanksgiving because that will be here before you guys know it. I have um, some Halloween ones, I have a really cute little kitty with a moon um, which you'll see on my special Halloween bags that I made. Um, I guess I can show you those. But yeah, so I've been having a lot of fun knitting the foraging mittens. Um, we are going to go and visit my family in America from the from the middle of December until beginning middle of January. So we'll be there for quite a while, three weeks. And we can't wait. And these will definitely be done by then because I know that my mom will um, want to wear those when we come. So I'm having a lot of fun making these. And this is in my Knit and Stitch Bits bag, which I adore. Um, it's one of my favorites. I think the fabric is so beautiful. Like I say every time I show it, it's just, it's really special because the maker of Knit and Stitch Bits, um, when she saw this fabric, she thought of me and she had to give that to me. So that was very kind of her. All right. So, my Halloween bags. I have been waiting for this fabric because I wanted to make some really special Halloween bags with some out of the norm for a homespun house um, zipper pulls. You can also use them as progress keepers. So, these are the bags. They're a really, really nice shape, I think. And I'm toying with the idea of making this a normal shape for my shop. Um, I really love, I, I just love these bags. I think they are awesome. <laughs> and as you can see, Homespun House now has new labels. Just gets more personalized and more awesome. And this is the really sweet zipper pull charm that's on the bag. So there are, um, there's the size. And then I have this size. And the smaller ones have a pink zipper and the larger ones have this kind of mustardy yellow zipper. And um, the Halloween bag is called Spooky Cat. And while on the subject of Halloween, I can go ahead and debut to you guys my Halloween yarn. Um, I really, really thought about what this yarn would be, and I love it. So all of these things are already listed in the shop. I did a big update on Friday the 18th, which was my birthday, and this is my Olsen fingering, which is 75% BFL superwash and 25% nylon. Um, there are 400 meters or 438 yards in there. So it's a, it's a pretty good skein. Um, for BFL, it is a very soft BFL, in my opinion. And I, di I dyed this a very, very tonal lilac, gray, um, deep plum purple. Um, and then it's speckled with, I don't know how well the camera will pick it up, but it's speckled with these deep, um, kind of burnt orange speckles and then with um, black speckles and then um, some plum speckles and I think this is going to knit up amazingly and I called this 
This is Halloween from The Nightmare Before Christmas because I love that song. This is Halloween, Halloween, Halloween. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about the yarn that I'm dyeing at the end of the show. But because we were talking about Halloween on the theme of Halloween and because Halloween will be here in a month and a half, I know that you guys want your bags and your yarn to quick get up and knitting and enjoying for the month of October and for Halloween. So um, the next thing that I have been working on is my Kermes sweater. So the Kermes sweater is by Anna Mutz and it is a pattern put out by Infinite Twist. And I am knitting this in the toffee apple like color scheme, which has been a lot of fun. Um, it's very, very colorful, and I decided to go ahead and change up the pattern a little bit. So I really love the yarn. I think the pattern is writ ama written amazingly. And um, so let me just show you what I've done. Okay, so I don't know how well you can see the pattern, but if you can see it, you can see that the bottom has this really long ribbed section to make it so that it's... Um, Kind of more of a well more of a fitted piece definitely so I decided as you guys know from the last episode if you even remember uh, I wanted to make it an oversized cardigan <clears throat> so I decided to go ahead and knit I think two or three sizes larger than what I would normally wear and the nice thing about the infinite twist patterns is that it goes all the way up to an extra large. So it goes from a 30.75 um, or let's look at the bust, a 32 bust all the way up to a 44 and a half bust. So um, I knit this really pretty large. I didn't knit the largest size but um, anyway because I wanted to be oversized I decided to go ahead and knit the ribbing at the bottom just let's see about how long I think about three inches or two and a half inches I would say and now I'm going ahead and knitting the striping so in the actual pattern um, it just has this pink and this kind of salmony red striped but because I shortened this so much I decided that I probably wouldn't have enough yardage and I'm hoping that this works um, that I decided to do the pink, the salmon red, and then the, the deeper red, and then just stripe those three. So this is definitely something that I think will take a while. It's something that I knit on a bit when my mom was here. I cast it on while she was here, and then in the evenings while she knit her cowl, which is finished, it would have been amazing to have filmed a podcast with her, but we were seriously busy all the time doing stuff. But she did finish her cowl two years later. <laughs> and it turned out amazing. Um, I gave her some yarn to knit a couple of other things with. And yeah, I'll talk about that a little in the end if I forget, if I don't forget. And so yeah, this is, I knit on this a lot when she was here and it's been a lot of fun um, to knit with. And very popcorn-y, um, super easy, something that I don't really have to think about when I'm knitting. It's fun that in between there's this eyelet round, gives it a little bit of spice to the knitting. And um, I'm knitting this on my marbles, having a lot of fun. I love, I love having different sets of interchangeables because as weird as it is, it can't get boring. Even though I love, I love my carbons, I love my rosewood needles, I love my marbles. Those are the three interchangeable sets that I have. Um, it's fun to look at different needles and the fun thing about the marbles needles is that they're all different color depending upon the size so while while I haven't had a chance yet to knit with the larger ones I'm still having fun um, knitting with those in the pink because pink is my favorite color so um, yeah that's been fun to knit on I kind of would always like to have a sweater on the needles um, and I would love to knit a cabled sweater soon. Kristen from the Yarngasm podcast sent me a picture um, of a sweater designed by Michelle Wang. I cannot remember for the life of me what the pattern is called, but it's a really, really um, 
pretty pattern an extremely cabled pattern. It might be a newer pattern of hers. I know that Kristen said that they had um, a sample of it at her um, trunk show that she was at and she had to knit it. And then she sent me a picture and I was like, oh man, that's gorgeous. Um, so we'll see, maybe that could be in the works next. I would love to design a sweater. I don't know when I would have time to design something that large, but whatever. Okay. So the next thing that I'm working on is a simple sock out of some really, really pretty yarn. Um, this is a cream yarn with just different pastel toned, not even speckles to it, um, kind of, but the specks are quite, quite large and long. Um, and I have this in another Danny um, DPN Cozy, the same one, just different color scheme. I just love these birds so much. She posted a picture of it on Instagram forever ago and I was like, can I please buy it in both colors because it's so pretty. And of course, Danny, being the lovely person that she is, did the custom order for me. So that was really, really nice. And Danny, I've been thinking about you a lot lately. Um, I hope that your house move is going well. Um, I can't wait to see another podcast from you. You're definitely one that I really really look forward to and I know a lot of you viewers really look forward to because she's just so sincere and and wonderful so um yeah I'm having a lot of fun knitting on this it's just again nice to have a sock on the needles I feel like I feel like I've been so busy lately that I haven't had time to stop really um I'm taking care of Ruby most of the time when she's awake and the minute she goes to bed I am running like a chicken with my head off, <laughs> trying to get some work done. Um, and then when she wakes up, I'm spending time with her. And Robert's been home a little bit more lately this last week, which which has been the most amazing thing ever. I cannot even tell you how awesome it is to have a husband who is gone seriously all the time. Um, the months that Ruby was born, the first couple of months, he was basically gone Saturday through Sunday from 10 until midnight and I'm sure that most of you with children one child and especially two can imagine how hard that is you know for for a mother and for the children so that was a pretty hard time um, I missed him a lot Ado D missed him a lot um, but he was just really busy with with acting and um, now he's just started being home again really on Wednesday so it's a new thing it's fantastic um, he is so wonderful to quickly take Adri and Ruby outside um, to the park while I film this podcast so it's just really nice as soon as I'm finished I'm gonna go outside and we'll, we'll all hang out together so um, so yeah this is why I'm knitting quite simple things because I have to knit something that I just don't even really have to think about too much. Although lately, and this is why the foraging mitten was such a fun cast on, um, I have been wa I was knitting on the Kermi sweater and my just plain Molly socks. Um, I had just been thinking I need to cast on something that, you know, I need to think about a little bit with the foraging mitten. Um, you know, there's a pattern repeat going on there quite often and a little bit of change for the thumb. And so it was so fun to cast those on and to have something to make my brain move a little bit. Uh, sometimes, like I said, I really wanted those mindless knits, but there are definitely times where it's just like, okay, I can't just keep knitting and stocking it the entire time, um, in the round especially. Which can be therapeutic, but so can a little bit of brainful. If that's not even a word, but I'm going to trademark it or something. Brainful knitting. Um, so this is the cake. It's gorgeous. I love it. Really, really soft. A very nice base of yarn. And then I have my cute little sock stitch marker. I love these stitch markers. Um, you'll be seeing more of them for something special soon. 
And I have this in my amazing Love Sockwa bag from Sarah. Sarah, where are all of your bags? What is going on there? I'm a little bit worried. She has a podcast. Um, it's She also is knitting the windswept cowl. Goodness gracious, Sarah, how did I forget you? Um, so many awesome people are knitting the windswept cowl and saying such nice things about it. So I'm loving it. That's going on until... Uh, <laughs> I should, I should know this. I guess, I, I think it's going on until the 1st of November, but maybe we'll say the 2nd because that's Adodi's birthday. And that's an extra special day for an extra special pattern. Hmm. And you don't have to finish your, your shawl. Did I say cowl before? You don't have to finish your shawl. I've never been like that for my knit alongs. I just want people knitting along, chatting, praising each other, helping each other. Um, and that's why I don't have two separate threads. I never have a chatter thread and a picture thread. I did in the beginning of podcasting, but now I just have one thread where everyone is sharing, talking, and out of every single uh, entry, I will choose a winner. So it's not... If you're talking and um, posting a lot of photos and stuff, I guess you're entered more, but that's just the way that it is. That's just the way that I do my, um, that is just the way that I do my, um, contests, contests, knit alongs. So the next thing that I am knitting on is a beautiful new hat pattern. So this is out of O Wool local in her fringe tree colorway and can I just tell you that this yarn is amazing it is so lofty it is so soft it's a single ply which you all know I love it's completely new to me um, I've been wanting to try single ply for a really long time I kind of I've always liked the look of it and I fell in love with it when I knit my um, whispering Pines for my mom out of Spin Monkeys, a gray yarn of hers. And I thought, oh man, I need to knit more in single ply yarn. It's, there's just something different about it. It's, it's really enjoyable and it knits up beautifully. Now, I don't think it would necessarily be good for a garment, but for things like hats and shawls and mittens, maybe even not mittens so much. I uh, could, but it could be, I guess, but mittens, you know, they kind of, anything that has friction, I would say, but a hat and a shawl, um, and I think mittens could be, they could be okay. So anyway, I am knitting my newest hat pattern out of Owo Local. So this is the first time I've ever shown a kind of sneak peek of one of my patterns, but it's almost done. The pattern will be released soon. Um, I have sent it out to test knitters. Thank you so much for those of you who are test knitting for me. Um, and it should be released in a week and a half, so or two weeks. So that's really exciting. I will let you guys know the release date on my next podcast. Um, and I'm loving knitting it. And I know you guys will, will love wearing it. It's perfect hat season. Um, I have my adorable little apple tree stitch markers on here. And then I have um, a super cute apple progress keeper from the last time that I knit on it. Um, so I'm kind of in theme with my project. And the hilarious thing is, is for my cabling, I have a little darning needle down here that I've just been using to cable with. I just kind of clip it in there and then I take it out when I need it and cable with it. So it's been really, really fun designing a hat pattern. I've been having a lot of fun knitting it up. And again, it's another one that this cabled hat, it looks daunting maybe to people who have never knit cables or um, it looks maybe a little bit intricate, I guess. And it is intricate, but it's not something that you need to shy away from. I would say if you've 
knit one, if you've knit a cable pattern before, um, this is definitely one that you can do, that you can tackle. The It's going to be written in chart and written direction, so don't worry about it. I say go for it. It's going to be nice and warm as well. So um, I've shared with you guys all of my um, Halloween project bags. There will just be that fabric. Um, and then in the shop currently, I have Halloween bags, but I also have um, my normal, these are shawl, sock size project bags. This one's my absolute favorite. This one, then I have this one, which I love too. Then I have some, um, some larger ones. Robert's favorite. I gave Tina one of these for her birthday. <laughs> I like that one a lot too. All right, so now to debut. My new yarn. Um, you guys have all seen the Halloween um, colorway. So this is on Olsen fingering. And that's, this is Halloween. The next one is one of my favorites. This is the first skein that I dyed. And this one's called Blush. This is on, so I have two bases, like I said. I have Olsen, which is fingering. And that's 75 um, Superwash Blue Face Luster and 25% Nylon. And then I have um, Dale, and I have Dale in Fingering um, DK, and I have it in Worsted. And I love this base. I love both of my bases. I tried out quite a bit before um, before deciding what I want to have in a homespun house. And I I love the Dale is a 19 micron merino. It's not a superwash, and. Um, it's almost, it's basically cashmere grade, what, what the 19 micron merino is. And it is so soft and so, again, really lofty, very squishy. It's not, it's definitely not scratchy at all. It's one that you could use for a shawl, mittens, anything really. Um, you could even use it for socks. It would be a really special pair of socks, I guess, or really soft. Um, but I love it. So this is blush and that's the same. It has the same yardage as Olsen uh, 400 meters or 438 yards um, I have Birthday cake and this one is dyed up in DK and this is also the Dale DK um, I decided that I would love to have some yarn that I am dyeing only four months a year, and that's my birthday cake spe speckle dyed yarn. And um, that will be the month of my month, my birthday month, Adody's birthday month, Robert's, and Ruby's. So this will kind of only be a special um, yarn. The next one, and this one's in Dale DK, is Whisper. This is another one of my favorites. This is Karma. It just has really pretty lilac, different shades of green, pinks, blues. It's just a really cool tonal colorway. And this one's called Karma. That's on Dale Fingering. And there's more than one of these skeins in the shop. And some of these um, are repeatable. Some of these will not be repeatable. Berlin Sunrise. This is on, um, this is Dale Fingering. And then I have Aurelia. This is on a 50% alpaca, 50% um, BFL base. It's very, kind of has a pretty halo to it. It's very, very like a variegated skein. Then I have Luna's Dance. Grays, greens, teal, turquoise, blue. Then 
Then I have this one on, um, this is on Dale Fingering, the 19 Micron Merino, with different shades of blues and creams and oranges with gray. It's really pretty. Dale Fingering again. I'm really excited to be able to knit some of these up. And the ones that I'm showing you now will be up on the shop tomorrow on Monday. This is on Dale DK. It's on Dale Fingering. And Dale DK. This one will be called The Great Pumpkin from Charlie Brown. So this is another special um, fall colorway. And I love this, this colorway. And it's also really nice and soft. So those have been seriously so much fun to dye up. I have been having the time of my life dyeing yarn. I've already started um, dyeing my Christmas colorways. <laughs> I know that's funny, but um, I've already started dyeing Christmas colorways and just getting really excited because I'm so in love with Christmas and I can't wait to have some fun Christmas yarn for you guys. Um, I really want to do a uh, yarn club, um, probably a three month club I will, I'll do to start off with. Um, let me know if any of you guys are interested in that. I haven't decided exactly what the theme will be. Um, something fun, definitely. Um, but yeah, so Adori has no Kita this week. Uh, tomorrow she'll be going to Tina and Emma's house, spending some time with them. And then Robert is home Tuesday through Friday. So he'll be taking care of Ruby and AOD, and then Emma will be here for two days as well. So that will be really nice. Um, I will be doing a lot of yarn dyeing this week. I will be sewing more bags. The, the Halloween bags that are in the shop, some of them have already been sold. There are a couple left. Um... That's all, there will be no more Halloween bags. So if you wanna get one, run over to the shop and get them before they're gone. So my mom was here for a couple of weeks and it was so much nicer than I thought. Um, it was nice to spend every single day with her, every single moment with her. It was seriously such a pleasure. Um, most days we went outside and we were gone from the time Erodi was here. Erodi was in Kita to the time we picked up Erodi from Kita. So we would go and we had coffee and we would have lunch in some places and um, just talked a lot and knit together. Um, we watched, we started watching a little bit of Downton Abbey because I have started watching Downton Abbey again um, from the beginning of the show beginning of the series. I haven't seen the newest season yet. Um, I've seen the first four. I think there are four seasons. I've seen the first four and um, thought I better start again because I don't really remember everything. So my mom and I started watching Downton Abbey and she liked it pretty pretty good. I think we maybe watched four episodes and she thinks about maybe getting my dad to watch it with her, um, which would be really fun. I would love to talk about Downton Abbey with her. Um, we watched a movie, which I don't remember the name of it, one that my mom recommended. It was pretty good. Um, and yeah, it was just, it was just really nice. It wasn't like a trip where we had anything that we really had to do, anywhere that we really had to go, anything that we really had to see. We just had fun shopping together and trying out new foods and coffees. And we were in Roche for a couple of days, which was pretty nice. Um, and yeah, it was just a nice time. Like I said, we knit together. My mom was really inspired while she was here to learn and to want to be more of a maker. And that is really exciting to me because she got home and she took out the sewing machine and her first day off, which was my birthday, she went to um, a store and bought some fabric. She wants to make some pillowcases and I know she wants to do a crochet edge on the pillowcases. And the fabric she bought is beautiful. Um, 
I was really impressed when she sent me the picture of the fabric she chose. I just thought, oh my goodness, I love it. I, I love that fabric. And um, I know my grandma's going over there today to help her thread her machine <laughs> because she doesn't even know how to do that. But you have to start from somewhere, right? And I'm, I'm really happy that she said she's going to do it and she's going to do it. That makes me, makes me feel really proud of her, really excited to you know, have a kind of a hobby in common. Um, it will be fun in December if she keeps with it to go and see what she's done. And I know she would really love to sew clothing for herself. Um, so that would be really, really neat if she made herself a skirt or um, she's pretty busy working. She works pretty much a full-time job. Um, and uh, so it would be really, really fun to see. Um, so that was really fun and really exciting to see. And I can't wait to watch her her progress and see her pillowcases um, when she sews them. And I'm curious if she will go ahead and do the crochet edging on it. Um, but yeah, so it was just, it's, it's been wonderful. The time has flown. Ruby's getting so big. She can almost sit now. So that's crazy. She just turned four months this month. And um, yeah, it's been really good. Elodie's been adjusting wonderfully to Ruby. She's has never been jealous of her, um, which is really nice. There was one situation which was pretty funny. Uh, mm, one of the first times we took Ruby out in the Moby, Elodie was like, she looks so warm in there. And we were just walking outside and Elodie desperately wanted um, to be carried in one of them and she was like crying and saying she's fr I'm freezing I'm freezing I need to come up in there too and Erudy is seriously the most sweaty kid in the world she is never freezing she never complains about being cold she never she would walk outside in the snow barefoot and without a jacket on and it's funny because my mom told me that I was the same way that I was always like sweaty and I was always saying mom I'm so sweaty and in the winter, my mom sometimes would let me run around without my jacket on just because I wouldn't get sick and I was just always sweaty, <laughs> which is really funny for me to imagine. But um, but yeah, I really look forward to getting back into hand dyeing this week. I'm just having way more fun than I imagined with the adventure of dyeing my own yarn. Um, it's been amazing and fun and such a neat journey. Uh, I'm so grateful to Kristen for really um, cheering me on and helping me and just kind of, you're, you've been basically my biggest cheerleader throughout the way and it's made me feel really good and really confident and um, I know that you think no question is a dumb question, although I can think of one question that I asked you that was kind of a dumb question and you didn't even laugh. I'm sure you have no idea what I'm talking about. Maybe you do. <laughs> but um, but yeah, hand dyeing has been so much fun and it's so exciting for me to see a homespun house just becoming this amazing thing. Uh, it's exciting, it's mind blowing, it's wonderful. And those of you who want to start your own business, do it, you can do it. It's so much fun. Um, I'm having the time of my life. So you guys have a fantastic week ahead. I hope that I see you guys soon um, and the time doesn't get away from me. I've missed you so much. I've thought about podcasting so much and it was really nice that Robert gave me the opportunity today to just get it out of the way um, because I am, am, and I'm learning this about myself, definitely a workaholic. I love working. It's something that I'm doing every spare second I have. And uh, so filming a podcast in the middle just was really, really difficult. <clears throat> so I'm going to go outside, hang out with my girls and my husband a little bit and enjoy the fresh air. We were already at the flea market this morning. Didn't find anything, um, which is okay. I saw a lot of beautiful teacups and tea sets and things like that. Um, but yeah. I didn't get anything. And then we just played at the park for a little. Came home, had some really, really, really delicious wraps. Um, 
there's a store called Lidl here in Germany and they just started carrying the most amazing vegetarian products and if you're American and you eat Morningstar Farms, I think Morningstar Farms is probably my favorite vegetarian kind of product in America, but the ones here are a thousand times better. I know my mom was pretty impressed. It was so funny. I had made some wraps when my mom was here and um, I had put a vegetarian schnitzel in them and she spit it out because she really thought it was chicken. And she was like, what did you put? Is that real chicken in there? <laughs> and I was like, mom, do you think I would give you real chicken? Because my mom and dad are both vegetarian. And uh, yeah, so we've been eating all only vegetarian meat, I would say, since Lidl started offering it, and it's just been delicious, and I feel so much better not eating meat. My body feels better. It's just been really good. So I know I keep going on and on and on, and I said this would be a short episode, and I'm very curious if it is a short episode. <laughs> I hope to see you guys soon, and have a wonderful week.